Hello everyone, my name is John Doe. Welcome to the Ghost Layers Report. Here in my little humble abode here in Tokyo, Japan. It's not much, but this is where I live. You can see a little bit back there, some over there. But what we're going to talk about today, you know, is um, Osaka's very own, or Japan's very own at this point, Little Hitler, Taru Hashimoto. Now, recently, he's come out of nowhere, apparently, and resigned as mayor of Osaka. For no apparent reason. It would seem so. But, get this, here's the interesting part. He's running for re-election. For a post, he just resigned. Now, why would he be doing that? That seems ridiculous. That seems an exercise in, you know, in political masturbation there. But there's a reason for it. As typical with Hashimoto and how he behaves and how he politically goes about himself, he wants something. He's trying to prove a point. Now, it's already been proven that uh, the DPJ, New Komito, uh, several other minor parties, and of course that fucking joke of a party, the Japan Communist Party, yeah, I know, but fuck the Japanese Communist Party. They're just a bunch of reformists and social democrats who are not interesting at all and not really doing jack to promote the to promote socialism and communism in Japan. But all these different parties you know, have, have already said and prove it to be true that we're not running any candidates against him. No, not at all. Well, there's a reason for that. Typical in bourgeois, multi-party politics. They don't want to be embarrassed by losing to this guy. Right? Because it's assured he's going to be re-elected. In Osaka, especially, not only in Osaka, but in the Kansai area in South Japan, the Nihon Shin no Kai, which means the Pan Japan Restoration Party, which is he's the co-leader of, has a very strong base down there. Because Ashimoto and his co-leader, uh, Ishihara, are very good at kicking up shit. Right? They're very good at... um. Flying the nationalist flag, you know, and talking about this or that, and getting the people into a fever pitch, without, without educating them or giving the, giving them the access to proper education to things, to drum up support and get reelected and get their power base strong, right? Typically, what they do, you know, very normal thing for them, right? You know, Hashimoto talking about Japan needs a dictator to really solve things. Now, if the common poll proletariat, you know, who's not, doesn't have class consciousness, who's in that situation, those are material conditions, that's the social construct he's dealing with, he's going to think, yeah, 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 man, screw it, yeah, we need to get things fixed. And they love it, right? That's how he initially got elected. But you remember him, you know, Taro Hashimoto from last year, being the guy that came out and said, you know, during imperialist Japan's wartime efforts in Asia, we had sex slaves for the military, and that was a good thing. It was necessary to keep the, keep the tension and the stress off the men so they could focus. Yeah, that was him. And he doubled down on it when he met with um, some commander or high-ranking guy at the U.S. Navy over here and said that, hey, you know, uh, I know you guys got a problem with your aggressive soldiers, and there's been some rapes in the past of you know, women here in Japan, so how about you, guys, you just send your guys over to Osaka and you can have all, they can have all the sex they want with uh, our legal sex industry in, in Japan. And the reason he said that is because the man earlier in his life was a lawyer. And he was a lawyer for all these sex industry companies that engage in massive sexual exploitation, and massive prostitution, abusive women beyond anything you could imagine. And he helped these companies skirt around the law. To keep them in business. Yeah, a real piece of work this Hashimoto guy is, you know. So, no one's going to oppose him. So, why is he doing it? Okay. He's doing it because his continued push, he wants to rival Tokyo. Yeah, you have two major economic bases in, in Japan. Of course, you have Tokyo here where I am. And you have Osaka. So, you have economic warfare... 
within the economy in Japan. Now, Tokyo has been pretty smart. They've been able to keep this jackass at bay to prevent this inter-economy weird economic warfare he wants to ga- engage in. But this time, he's trying to prove that, hey, I got a mandate from the people. They want this. So what he wants to do, basically, right, is to form a metropolitan area. Just like Tokyo has, of the 23 or 24 odd number uh, special wards. And they're all broke down into this type of mini cities. And they're all under a um, central control of the city government in Tokyo. And they, it kind of delegates the rules and what they can get away with, right? It's been very successful. Although now, you know, the Japanese economy is what it is. I mean, capitalism, go figure. But he, you know, he wants to create a rival economy down in South Japan. It's a, it's a fucked up idea. It's not going to work. It's beyond ridiculous. You know, how can you have, how can you engage in economic warfare against your own country? It's harebrained idea. Doesn't make any sense, but that's what he wants to do. So he's going to run, un- he resigns because he can't get enough support from the uh, LDP to support this. So what he's going to try to do is resign, run an election that's obviously he's going to be unopposed to him, and then say, yeah, I got a mandate. Now, people want it. That's not democracy. That's bullshit bourgeois democracy in its highest form. You know, you don't have any people running against you. The fuck, man? You're just like, it's okay, I resign. All right, vote for me. Okay, now you see they love me again. Where are the people's decision-making power in all of this, Hashimoto? Did you ask the people? A simple vote. Under those conditions you're running to be re-elected? Is bullshit. It's a ruse, man. It's a lie. What is this? You really want to know what Japan needs to be more prosperous and people to be more happier? How about this for a change? Ask the people who damn live here, buddy. How about that one? Instead of playing this bourgeois bullshit fake-ass democracy where you just bob and weave and you make moves and you cut deals with all the little uh, supposed opposition parties and you turn around and you say, oh, the people support me. They don't support you. They just don't have another choice. And they're powerless. Because you control the system, the um, structural base of, of the economy. You know, the bourgeois and the capitalists are in control of it all. So it doesn't matter what we think or feel. As long as they can twist the rules and change things around to make it look like you know, the people support them, this is how they behave. So that's your good friend Hashimoto. He's pulling some more shit here. It's disgusting to me, and I just thought, Unbelievable to me that people in Japan fall for this. And I thought I'd just speak about this. Thought it was interesting to you guys, you know. So leave some comments below. Let's get a discussion started if you want. Please share this video around. Who knows how many who knows how many views it might get, you know. We might be able to have a big one here. Who knows? I doubt it, but we maybe will. So until next time, this is me, John Dole, here in Tokyo. Check it out.